just going to move these because I need to walk in order to find out what I'm thinking, so excuse me. Um, those who are involved with learning will know it's a particular quirky learning style, so here we go. And, um, so, good morning. Ka tani te ti ti, ka tani te ka ka, ka tani kokia ho, ngā mihi nui o tēnei rā. Um, for, for our visitors um, to New Zealand, um, the bird from the north of, the, of New Zealand, uh, the kaka, cries out and has something to say. Uh, the bird from the south, the titi, does the same. And I hope I can say something useful and greetings to, to everyone. Um, look, it's a, it is a real pleasure to, to be talking to the um, National Digital Forum um, because it is a grouping of people for you know, we should be so hugely proud, um, I think, of what we've achieved together. And already um, we've been talking about uh, the situation in New Zealand where we have worked together across sectors um, in, in, a, in a most, um, you know, it, it really is, I think, probably um, a uniquely Kiwi way. So what I want to do this morning, uh, given the um, technical people a real uh, nightmare, because um, I'm, I'm using some old technology, some old images, uh, to go back and, and show you what we were thinking in the ND, NDF. Um, uh, basically, what I've been asked to do this morning is to talk a little bit from the inside, when I was inside Wellington, um, and so from the inside out, and now in, at Lincoln University from the um, um, outside in, and share those two different experiences I'm going to use some examples, um, and um, then I'm going to use the Canterbury earthquakes to show how it all came together, and uh, it, what an extraordinary, um, the important um, readiness of the glam sector in, in that event. Then I'm going to fast forward, and I'm going to ask you to um, think of some, I suppose, new challenges for the NDF. Um, from the outside in, I'm now part of the a science system, the research sector in New Zealand, and I want to um, um, offer some challenges uh, to the NDF um, um, of things I want you to fix, actually. Uh, there's some very, very, uh, I don't want you to be too complacent. It's only, uh, we've, we've done well, but I, I think there are some, um, some really difficult issues uh, to, that we need to traverse together. And look, before I, I launch in, um, um, I'm going to go very, very quickly, so you're going to have to fasten your seatbelts. Um, it, it is appropriate, I think, uh, to acknowledge um, um, Sam Jackson. Um, Sam is a uh, commander of the National Library of New Zealand. And of course, I can't be in Te Papa uh, without remembering uh, Sam Bennington and um, Paul Reynolds. We miss them a huge deal, but they're, they're with us in spirit. So what, um, I mean, if I look back uh, about six years, um, possibly a little bit more. Um, we really have, um, you know, had an extraordinary um, opportunity um, to, to uh, everything has changed. I mean, I, I think six or eight years ago, I don't think any of us really realised just how, um, you know, how extraordinary the um, transformation was going to be with the digital environment. I remember sort of looking quizzically at, at the Time uh, magazine, I think it was 2006, uh, always had person of the year, and um, that year in 2006 it said the person of the year is you, and it was really um, starting to say that we were starting to understand the extraordinary democratisation of information, and the shift in power, I suppose, to um, the individual citizen, the 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 um, citizens' creative content, um, and as I said, the democratising power. So some of that power balance, I suppose between august, authoritative, you know, institutions, cultural institutions and scientific institutions, I think we were starting to see quite a, quite a shift. Um, and in those, um, even six years ago, we were starting to, um, in New Zealand, like many countries, we were trying to sort of make sense of the digital world that we're in. Remember the digital strategy. Um, remember the digital content strategy, it seems a hell of a long time ago. But our vision was to have a connected New Zealand, 
um, and connecting community and businesses um, with government and, and, and some of the uh, cultural institutions that are here um, in Wellington. And we, um, we, we the, the digital strategy provided some opportunity for us because for the first time in our lives, we actually got the this money from the Community Partnership Fund. And uh, we, this was extraordinarily exciting to us. And, and have a look what that funding did. Now this slide is seriously embarrassing and it used to annoy the hell out of um, um, Paul Reynolds um, because he thought I was very sad in what I was trying to explain. But here, uh, we've got community partnership money for, um, it, people remember Kete Horapanua, um, that wonderful open source project with that community repository that is now underpinning the community infrastructure of the whole country. And that was from that time. And at that time, um, we were trying to think of how we would bring it all together. And of course, Digital New Zealand, which is, you know, we, we're championing and honouring today, um, is so relevant to the access strategy of our infrastructure in New Zealand. That was developed on a song in terms of money. If you think of the Europeana uh, investment of the multi-millions of euros, Digital New Zealand was developed on about $1.2 million. Now, it seemed a lot to us in those days. But um, this was our attempt to sort of say, well, how would we connect New Zealand with the baskets of knowledge? Um, and, and how would we have that kind of access and, and sharing mechanism across it? So Kete, um, DNZ, both very important. Um, the other funding that, that was, I think, um, quite significant for us was around the Aotearoa People's Network. And um, that really set up that free, democratised information um, uh, it, it around uh, the country. Um, it was also worth noting, it was a managed service. It was powered by a national institution, the National Library. But the communities, they didn't care that it was um, powered by the National Library. In a community, it meant that their community, their local library, museum or archive, um, was um, basically uh, championing and the citizens' front door to the digital age. So those were very important um, investments for us. Um, the one that I'm kind of, um, Ed, you will be relieved, where are you? Somewhere. Um, uh, the, the, um, the thing that I, is really important, I think, in part of our infrastructure was the, uh, and this was a lot of money, $24 million, uh, to build a capability around digital preservation in New Zealand. It was with the National Library in New Zealand, and even more remarkably, um, um, successive governments invested in digital preservation, and in the middle of the global um, economic crisis, another uh, $12.4 million went to Archives New Zealand to leverage that capability of the National Library. And I think digital preservation um, is, is really uh, uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, but it is really um, a, a great strategy for perpetual access. So we can and could, uh, with that expenditure, all of the digital images that you're, um, and digital concepts and web um, archiving, theoretically, um, we could then, as a country, guarantee that the taonga um, of our communities, of our cultural institutions, could, theoretically, be accessible in a 50 and 100 years time. And so too, uh, we were able as a country to um, transfer how knowledge, ideas, creativity are transferred, protected and understood in a digital age. We should not under underestimate um, the significance of that. So as a country, we have built, and the NDF was right at the heart of this, um, a very light infrastructure about access to digital New Zealand, um, and um, preservation. So we got the access um, and preservation mix right, but also we got the, if you like, the Wellington and community mix right as well. So um, the other thing that, I know this is going to be seriously boring to everyone, but I do want to make a, a, a great uh, case, I suppose, for good policy. And um, the um, New Zealand, the um, NZ goal, the New Zealand government came to the party with one of the most progressive open access licensing, um, uh, the open access to data and information 
and that policy and NZ goal uh, with the Creative Commons licensing underpinning it, I hope you're starting to see just how profound um, the, the whole of this light infrastructure across this country has begun and uh, has, has developed. And so that, in many ways, um, is the inside, the, those were my reflections from inside Wellington, and did it mean anything? What was the impact, which is what, what, what's going to be, um, we're going to be talking about during the conference? Um, and um, of course, I was in Christchurch um, in September um, 2010 when the um, earthquakes, the first big earthquake hit. It was absolutely terrifying. And um, I left Christchurch, come up on Monday morning emergency um, meeting of, of, uh, of government departments. And um, I left on that plane, I remember it distinctly, with, you know, what's the role of a national library? What's the role of a cultural institution in this? Because I knew that the um, documentary heritage from the Napier earthquakes had not been well documented, and I never really knew why. Well, I did know why, because when you're in the middle of something so frightening, the last thing you're going to do is document it. So I left Christchurch that morning sort of with the kind of authoritative, you know, um, published material kind of hat on. And by the time I got to Wellington, um, you know, I, I basically realised that we needed to change the whole, whole paradigm of what a cultural institution and what the NDF is about. So we put photographers into the field straight away. We put oral historians into the field. And, and what an extraordinary readiness in all of the structures that I've talked about. Absolutely extraordinary. Um, and, um, you know, we, we were creating history on the fly. And I've kept this particular image, because remember this was September before February. We didn't know we were going to have any more. But look at, look at that bit of history there. Over 700 felt in the first week, and more expected. Well, 6,000 more is, you know, so, so basically what happened at the University of Canterbury is that they, um, they invested some um, $1.3 million into setting up a nexus, a, a digital repository, um, well, not, a, a basically a harvesting repository on community stories, on um, um, sound, images, data. And the seismic database remains today as one of the most profound research archives, potentially. And um, so, so we, we really do need to um, pause there and say we did something absolutely uh, amazing. So let me now fast forward. And um, um, really, the, the theme that underpins all of this is that it's only been done through collaboration. And that's what the NDF is absolutely all about. Convergence and collaboration, because who gets the toss whether um, a digital object is an archives object or a library object or a museum object? It simply doesn't matter. But if I fast forward now to the outside of Wellington perspective, um, and I've got five more minutes to do this, so I'll do it very quickly. Um, then I wanted to, to give you another scenario and, and start laying down some challenges. Now, um, in April this year, um, remember I'm in, a, in the science system now, and I'm going to argue that science is heritage too, and I really want this to be on your agenda. Uh, Minister Joyce announced the concept of the Lincoln Innovation Hub. It would bring together um, well over 900 scientists involved in the, the science and research that underpin um, something like 70% of New Zealand's exports, 12% of our GDP, those land-based environmental in industries. So what um, basically brings together agri-research, land care, Lincoln University, crop and food, plant and food, and um, um, dairy New Zealand. So they basically, um, now it leads me to, to the challenges of the Lincoln Hub. Uh, we're bringing together a data project working with national institutions like the National Library, NESI, RIANS, hopefully the Ministry of the Environment, to, to look at how, as a country, we begin to um, manage and curate data. And this is one of the things. So the first thing, I think, just as we had uh, policy coherence around um, 
um, open. Um, in, this, in some cases, the government's policy on open government, open information, um, what the government was trying to do there was to um, basically unlock data and information. Um, and, and in some ways, um, uh, recycle it. So I'm just going to move on from that. Um, and what, what we found in terms of, of science policy is that there's a disjunct. So we've got open policy on one hand, and the science system in New Zealand is, is actually very cryptic from outside New Zealand. Um, science, uh, the science ministry is now absorbed into a mega ministry. Um, there's a lot of capability lost. And there's a lack of coherence um, in science funding. We spend tens of millions of dollars on, on research funding, um, but we don't have the policy that ensures that any, any public expenditure in science, uh, a public expenditure needs to be publicly accessible. And there's a, there's a, there's a disjunct, and, and I, I really do uh, would love people to start thinking about the policy framework around New Zealand science as we have on government information. I suppose um, I ask how serious we are about open, and, and here I'm going to make a very brief point. It's just simply mad that um, the Creative Commons that underpins so much of um, our work in New Zealand is struggling for funding. It's fundamental to the government's policy about open, and it should, in my view, be funded by the government. And we're not talking a lot of money here. About $200,000 would do it. So that's another challenge. I do believe we need to get that um, policy coherence and, and, and have, as you look across the, um, the state of our rivers, our waters in Canterbury, um, the research underpinning um, 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 dairying in New Zealand, um, the impacts of global warming, we now need to be able to curate, manage, and replicate data. And so we must, I believe, as a forum, uh, become much more serious about our science system. We must never, I think, you, some of you are old enough to remember when um, the DSIR was uh, deconstructed or reconstructed or whatever in the 80s, we lost a huge amount of New Zealand science, the data, the science, and it was never, ever happened again. So we need to, um, I think, start, I really want Wellington to get serious, I suppose, about the science system. And um, I suppose the final thing is that um, we are, as I speak, deleting so much of our cultural memory, um, our, our research um, infrastructure. And uh, so, so digital preservation, um, never probably uh, the, the, the most um, appealing topic, I think really needs that enduring access on all of those 27 million objects in digital New Zealand. We must never, ever lose them. So in winding up, um, I'm the, the, one of the things that um, I worry about is, um, do we need to worry about our intellectual sovereignty in terms of the digital world? How much of our data um, is actually offshore or in cloud? And, and are there questions that uh, are around keeping a New Zealand sovereignty um, in terms of some of the intellectual digital assets that we have? It's a question I raise, and I'd be really happy to debate and, and, and talk to people about it. So in summary, um, I have gone back um, six, eight years um, to a, a national digital forum that has done an incredible job. Um, we've built infrastructure that is relevant to today, light, um, Digital New Zealand, Kete, um, the um, digital preservation capability, the policy framework about open government. I landed in the Christchurch earthquakes to say thank you. Um, I think we can, in our generation, feel assured that that um, extraordinary event in New Zealand's history will be well recorded, documented, understood and re-engaged with over time. Um, and, and that is a real tribute to the forum. And then I've laid down some challenges and, uh, to say that the science system um, in New Zealand, the research system, needs your attention um, as we look at the complex issues of data curation, um, intellectual sovereignty, 
open and some of the policy frameworks and the policy dissonance um, that I think we need to resolve. So I am so pleased to be here. I can now get off the stage and enjoy the conference. Um, I, I want to end in saying uh, I have huge respect uh, for this forum and I'm delighted to be part of it again. Nōrera, tēnā tātou katoa. <laughs>